before we begin, I just want to remind everyone that while we are singing, we are to wear our masks. Uh, as much as I hate them, uh, and hate wearing them, especially while singing, um, Thomas County's numbers spike at the Rose Show. They're coming down again. I don't want to see them spike again. But apart from that, this isn't my thing. This is Bishop Loeb's, what is the phrase, godly admonition, something like that. Um, so please, if, and if you don't have a mask, we have extra ones out in the uh, lobby. The ushers can bring them to you. Um, when we're not singing, you may do as you please. But please, when we sing, let's put the mask on. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, one God. O oh, come, come, let us adore him. Him. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high, glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who has given unto us thy servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. We beseech thee that thou wouldest keep us steadfast in this faith and evermore defend us from all adversities who livest and reignest one God, world without end. A reading from Isaiah chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, 
the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Jesus answered him and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, 
but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In Flannery O'Connor's short story, The Displaced Person, just before Mrs. Shortly dies of a stroke, O'Connor writes that, quote, her eyes, like blue painted glass, seemed to contemplate for the first time the tremendous frontiers of her true country. Her eyes, like blue painted glass, seemed to contemplate for the first time the tremendous frontiers of her true country. Her true country, of course, being the kingdom of God. This morning, as Scott just read, we encounter another of God's creatures, attempting to do his best to appreciate the frontiers of his true country. Only he's not doing very well, so Jesus tries to help him out. Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot enter it, much less even be able to see the kingdom, his true country, unless he be born again. To be born again is the primary gift of holy baptism. Regeneration is the word you will hear in the liturgy. When we are baptized, we die with Jesus on the cross. That is the great gift, symbolized by us either going underwater or, hearing, or having water poured upon us. Mind you, this is not initiation into an organization but rebirth into the body of Christ, being made living members of the same, member in the sense that my arm is a member of my body. It's part of it. Grafted into the body of Christ is a phrase you will hear. Now, one of the reasons the church has read John 3 on Trinity Sunday for so many years is that one really must be born again to attempt to begin to deal with things like the Incarnation, which is what Nicodemus is trying to cope with here, not to mention the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, which enfolds not just the Incarnation, but everything else requisite to Christianity and the Kingdom of God. And if we really want to understand it, then we must first attempt to believe it, not the other way around. We don't understand in order to believe we believe in order to understand. Let us never forget that God isn't a problem to be solved. He's a mystery to be adored. As far as the New Testament is concerned, the Holy Trinity is what Christianity is all about. If we are to consider ourselves Christians and want to see and enter the kingdom of heaven, we have to acknowledge in one way or another at some point in our life the three in one and one in three, which is precisely what Henry Clark and Eleanor Ramsey are about to do. Because the Trinity is all about how we relate to God and how he relates to us and even how he relates to himself. And even to begin to deal with this, we must be born again. And, and why not? We're dealing with ultimate reality here, the supernatural and not those things and ideas common to the natural man or natural woman. Walt Whitman understood this when he wrote of his complete and total assurance that interiors have their interiors and exteriors have their exteriors and the eyesight another eyesight and the hearing another hearing and the voice another voice. Nothing could be further from the truth. C.S. Lewis described the truth of the Holy Trinity this way. He said, think of me as a house. God the Father built me. God the Son bought me. And God the Holy Ghost lives in me. 
And John Wesley, toward the end of his life, offered this. Tell me how there are three candles in this room, but one light, and I will explain to you the mode of the divine existence. Of course, none of us will completely understand this mystery until we get to heaven. In the meantime, perhaps the best way we can uh, attempt to appreciate the Trinity is to ponder what our life in the church would be without it. My favorite example comes from my mentor, the late Reverend William Henry Ralston, Jr. When Father Ralston was a first-year seminarian at General Seminary in New York back in the late 1940s, another student in his Theology 101 class asked the professor this question, what is the very least one must believe in order to be considered a Christian? What is the very least one must believe in order to be considered a Christian? And this great professor thought for a few moments and then offered this. I guess the very least one must believe in order to be a Christian is to have the sense that something out there beyond you exists upon which your own existence depends. And then for this thing somehow to make itself known to you and to do so in a way by which you might respond back to it. And what this professor expressed was a perfect description of the Trinity. Here we have the Father on whom our existence depends, the Son who communicates the Father's will to us and dies for us, and the Holy Spirit the way we can respond to the Father and to be led to him. Take away any one of these and we not only cease to be Christian, but we cease to be human in the fullest sense of that word. So let us now approach the font and begin to make Henry Clark and Eleanor Ramsey human in the fullest sense of that word, that they might, along with each of the rest of us, contemplate the tremendous frontiers of our true country. So let us stand and sing hymn 293.
that these should have been already baptized or no? No. Here's the beloved. For as much as our Savior Christ said, none can enter into the kingdom of God except to be regenerate and born anew of water and of the Holy Ghost. I beseech you to call upon God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. That of his bounteous mercy he will grant to these children that which by nature they cannot have that they may be baptized with water and the Holy Ghost, and received into Christ's holy church, and be made living members of the same. Let us pray. Almighty and so forth of God, the aid of all who need, the helper of all who flee to thee for some, the life of those who believe, and the resurrection of the dead. We call upon thee for these children, that they, coming to thy holy baptism, they receive remission of sin by spiritual regeneration. Receive them, O Lord, as thou hast promised by thy well beloved Son, saying, Ask, and ye shall have. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So give now unto us who ask. Let us who seek find. Open the gate unto us who knock, that these children may enjoy the everlasting benediction of thy heavenly washing. And they come to the eternal kingdom, which thou hast promised by Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the words of the gospel written by St. Mark in the 10th chapter, the 13th verse. They brought young children to Christ, that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. When Jesus saw it, he was much confused and said unto them, Some of the little children who come unto you. For of such is this the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. And now, being persuaded of the good will of our Heavenly Father, for these children did bear by his Son, Jesus Christ. Let us faithfully and devoutly give thanks unto him, and say together, Almighty and everlasting God, Heavenly Father, we give thee humble thanks that thou hast God saved from us with the knowledge of thy grace, and the gain of thee, and the increase of this knowledge, and the earthly state in us evermore. Give thy Holy Spirit to these children, that they may be born again, and be made heirs of everlasting.
He brought the petition to be confirmed by
spot and your sign with the sign of the cross. And told her that hereafter she shall not be ashamed of the face of faith in Christ crucified. And Matthew the five of his manner of sin, the world and the devil, and to continue Christ's faithful soldier to serve under Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> Seeing now the good beloved brother, that these children are regenerate, crafted in the body of Christ's church. Let us give thanks unto Almighty God for these benefits, and with one accord make our prayers unto Him. These children may live the rest of their lives according to this year. Let us pray together. We give the heart of thanks.
a few weeks for us to get this ironed out, so please be patient. Uh, there will be two chalices. Scott will have one on this side of the altar rail for those of you all who wish to drink out of the cup. Susan will have an intention cup at this end of the rail uh, for those who prepare to intent. You can either keep the host in your hands and let Susan intent it, or you can intent it yourself, or you do not have to receive the wine in any way, shape, or form if you do not wish to, because if you receive the bread, you receive the sacrament in its entirety. So uh, remember, stop the other side for those who want to sip. So it will be on this side. Uh, we want to welcome all our visitors and guests this morning. Uh, delighted to have you with us. Hope you give us the opportunity to speak to you following the service. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is he to Christ so to do. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, for with thy co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, thou art one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of substance, and we celebrate the one and equal glory of thee, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that Thou of Thy tender mercy didst give Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by His one oblation of Himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in His holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that His precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, hey, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace, and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And 
Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, the peace of the Lord be always with you. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. O God, most glorious, most bountiful, except we humbly beseech thee our praises and thanksgivings, for thy holy Catholic Church, the mother of us all who bear the name of Christ, for the faith which it hath conveyed in safety to our time, and the mercies by which it hath enlarged and comforted the souls of men, for the virtues which it hath established upon earth, and the holy lives by which it glorifieth both the world and thee, to whom, O blessed Trinity, be ascribed all honor, might, majesty, and dominion, now and forever. Amen. O Lord our God, whose name only is excellent, and thy praise above heaven and earth, we give thee high praise and hearty thanks for all those who counted not their lives dear unto themselves, but laid them down for their friends, beseeching thee to give them a part and a lot in those good things which thou hast prepared for all those whose names are written in the book of life, and grant to us that having them always in remembrance, we may imitate their faithfulness and with them inherit the new name which thou hast promised to them that overcome, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.
He said it between the cherubim, be the earth never so unquiet. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thank you, God.